Welcome to the brainstorm episode 54. Good to see you, Nick. We're, we're in back, person. Back in Another person. awkward handshake in person. <laughs> back in the studio. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. So, good to have you down here in the summer when we get to wear shorts to the office. Yeah, I went for a run this morning and it was uh, hot, humid, yes. high, high dew point. Yes. But today we're talking about Nick's favorite topic. AI, and one of my favorite topics, energy. So I feel like one of the most common questions we get is on energy, and not just related to AI. Anytime there's something new, electric vehicles, people say, is there enough electricity to charge all these cars? Bitcoin mining, there was a moment when everyone was pushing back and saying, is there enough electricity? Why are they stealing electricity? And now AI, data centers being built, big forecasts, and people concerned again about energy in the form of electricity. Well, that only begs one question. Will there be enough energy to meet our growing demands, especially when you layer in some of the forecasts out there, especially ours, when it comes to AI? data centers and what's going to happen? Great question. Yes. A common question. <laughs> Good question. Well, so I, I just framed this. Um, let me pull up the exact number here because we have our forecast relative to McKinsey's forecast. And so if I pull up McKinsey, I think their current projection is something like 50 gigawatts of uh, AI data center demand in... 2030. And ours is uh, exponential of that. So uh, if you convert this to you know terawatt hours, I think theirs gets to roughly 385 terawatt hours in 2030. And ours would be 2,300 terawatt hours in 2030. So I'd say our our forecast is much more aggressive on AI data center build out with uh, an expectation that we are going to continue to see improvements. And so you would say, wow, that sounds like a big number. But in the context of global electricity generation, this is not so significant. Um, right now, if you know if you look at the past five years, uh, global electricity generation has grown at around 2.7% annually. In order to meet the incremental demand from those AI data, data centers in our forecast, you need to increase the compound annual growth rate from 27 to 3.4%. So that's, that's global. Then obviously there's some caveats here, which is one, is that possible? Um, if we look at China, they've been growing at a compound annual growth rate of, I think it is 5.7% annually. So, and they're adding more, they added more uh, electricity generation in 2023 than we're expecting in 2030. So in 2023, it looks like they added roughly 350 gigawatts. And we're saying, you know, in 2030, AI hardware power demand is just over 300. Obviously, it can't all be in China. This gets to the global conversation, data centers, co-location, geography matters. Um, so countries need to pick their game up, but this should not be insurmountable in any way. Where do you think this increase comes from, both on a geographical basis and then you know, which type of, are we talking nuclear? Are we talking renewables? Where exactly do you think we'll get this, you know, new energy from? Uh, yeah. So as far as location, I think U.S. is likely a big area for AI data centers. I think the regulatory environment in Europe makes it difficult. And we've seen kind of a pullback from AI deployment in Europe just because of all of the rules. I imagine Asia is going to continue to push forward. 
with this. Um, as far as what type of energy production, this is a great question. And I think what's great about data centers is that they require a fairly constant usage of electricity. So that's paired quite well with nuclear. Um, so, you know, especially behind the meter, nuclear generation here uh, could be a great use case. The one downside is that, you know, f the momentum for nuclear is certainly picking up, but it's still in like the 2027 to 2030 timeframe for initial deployments of these small modular reactors. Uh, but after that, you know, if we can keep building momentum there, that's good. I think we're seeing natural gas is a potential or even right now, right, where their pockets, how are people solving this? Is uh, diesel or natural gas generators that are not attached to the grid? Seems like a short-term solution. Cer certainly, certainly. And so that you know, this kind of gets to one of those bigger questions of okay, if there are pockets of a power shortage, how do you solve it? Mm -hmm. And the way you solve it is you don't wait. To be connected to the grid right now grid interconnect times have gone up to like four years so if you can build and solve your power issues without the grid like don't wait for the grid if you think ai is going to pay off in a big way then it's still economic to pay more for electricity to expedite the process than to wait four years which is a lifetime in ai development um, to get a data center up and running. And that is another big question, which is what exactly is the payoff to some of this, you know, energy consumption? And, you know, everyone has hopes that AI will monetize at a high rate, but we don't actually have a ton of use cases today to point to, to say training these massively large models makes a lot of sense economically. I don't think that will always stand to be true, but currently there is, and I think there will be a, a larger question on this as we get some of these earnings to begin to play out and you hear from companies, I think Meta and Zuckerberg last quarter were very, um, they, were, they were focused on setting market expectations to say, look, we don't see a path to monetization for a few years when it comes to training their Meta AI but that's typically been how we follow or build out products. We spend money up front, and then we figure out the monetization mechanism on the back end. And once we have a scaled user base, which I think they, uh, in a recent podcast, Zuckerberg believes that they'll have the most uh, widely adopted chat bot or AI bot in Q4 of this year, right, which is interesting. Because they've shoved it onto... <laughs> right, yeah, you have the distribution. Yeah, yeah. But that distribution for them is technically free. I mean, you could make an argument that, you know, the placement of it takes away from, you know, they could be charging OpenAI for that spot. So it's not free in that sense. Mm -hmm. But for them, because they have a billion, two billion, three billion uh, user base, it's, it's very easy for them to get in front of many different eyeballs. But they can do that for free, which then keeps the rest of the market subdued in the way that they can actually monetize these mm -hmm. models. So I think that's where you'll have this gap and you'll have questions arise around why are we spending so aggressively on data center if these models can't monetize? Because I think- Because they're not monetizing. Because, because they're offering it for free. Because but that's yeah, not just- Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah. right. You have companies that can offer it for free, Google, meta and then you have companies that are in the startup world that can't offer it for free because they've spent the you know two three billion dollars to train these models mm -hmm. which meta and, and alphabet have but they have big enough balance sheets to be able to support that and then the distribution to make it make sense from a business use case down the line yeah which is interesting yeah i mean it certainly paints a different picture i'd say for the open ai's of the world. And this is kind of what Zuck was talking about in his letter saying, our business model isn't to charge for this. Yeah. Well, and I, I bring it up because I'm looking at your forecast and there have been blips in time looking back where energy demand and creation has actually stalled. 
And yeah, the question is, do you see a future of, you know, AI makes so much sense from, you know, thinking about it in 10 years, but we get into that kind of chasm of disillusionment where everyone says, you know, we're going to slow down the pace of spending. And so data centers and those build outs stall out a bit. Or do you think this is a case where the, the, the prize at the end is so big, companies are just willing to, and these data centers, right? You don't just put them up overnight. They're multi-year mm. rollout. So I think that will be an interesting point in time when everyone says, wait, does this right. actually When you actually sense? have to do the unit economics. Right. Well, that's, I will just say the, the blips here are, are pretty big recessions. Right. So it's like COVID was one. It looks like this other one's 2008. Mm -hmm. um, I will say one of the fun things in looking at this has been working with uh, the whole team, right? So working with Frank and Joseph on the AI hardware and Brett um, on the energy side as well, because right, we were discussing the unit economics of this and looking and it's like electricity is 9% of the total cost of one of these AI data centers. And so the question kind of to your point is, Right. If you're trying to move quickly, is even doubling that going to break the math here or not? And it's like likely not. But then there's the bigger question of, you know, what 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 type of monetization do you need on the tail end in order to justify uh, the billions and hundreds of billions closing in on over a trillion dollars of spend over time? Right. Right. And we don't even know how these models monet will monetize. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be direct payments? Is it going to be, you know, we're paying $20 a month to seven different, you know, chat interfaces? Or is this going to be... The unbundle, rebundle? Right. Or is this going to be indirectly monetized? That's probably the Facebook and Meta mm -hmm. route, maybe the, the Google route as well. Um, and then in that case, you know, how much how much demand is out there for different types of models and you know how do you survive it as, as a startup when you know your direct monetization path doesn't look as rosy as you thought it would because there's models out there for free and yeah. you can't charge that $20 yeah and i think we're in the transition state cuz we were even this was a different topic on friday or just mentioned with llama 3.1 and the question was looking at different um, different providers where you could call it and seeing the price for inference and output, input and output tokens, and mm -hmm. they were different. And so it's like some providers were fairly low cost, but they're not actually giving you the full Llama 3.1. And then the question was, okay, down the road, could you offer this for free and you're just having nike sponsor your model so that anytime someone asks what's the best shoes the model comes back and they say nike nike <laughs> i i think that is a good question especially you know just to bring it full circle when you're looking at you know reallocating resources or you know taking a market in the u.s and saying you know we need to reallocate time and attention towards energy production at the end of the day, you have to monetize that energy production in a way or create products out of it, which are, you know, these large language models that then monetize to make it all, you know, have been worth it. And we're still up in the air. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it in a pessimistic way, like we're not going to figure it out, but people will begin to wonder mm -hmm. because it takes time for this stuff to, you know, start to seep into the economy and have users be willing to pay for it. Yeah. Although I would say, I don't know if you've driven uh, Tesla 12.5, but people are seeing some promising results there. I have <laughs> hardware three, so I don't believe I will be getting it. Uh, nice. I think beta. I think actually later today, we're going for uh, a test drive with, with Joseph. Oh, nice. He so got the... He got the upgrade. Model. Nice. All right. All right. So uh, then, yeah. as, as we reflect, okay... Energy, there's, I, I think we are firmly in the camp of more electricity and energy is good. And if you continue to need electricity, you are going to naturally shift towards renewable because 
those are the lowest cost solutions. Um, and so that's why nuclear solar batteries are exciting. I will say on this, we did, we did the math here too, looking at data centers and square footage. And it's, unless you have additional land, it's difficult to do solar on the rooftop of data centers with batteries and have it be fully um, powered by that. But it could certainly be part of the solution there. Is solar just not efficient enough for the square footage you'd need? Yeah, for yeah. the square footage. Huh. Interesting. Um, and then I think the other trend here is, you know, just don't wait for the grid distributed and then backfill, let them connect it. I think the future is energy abundance. I'm here for it. Let's, let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Invest in the world you want to see. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Yeah, thank you. See you next week. Not in person.